Welcome. This is Dr. Gary Salton, Chief of R&D and Creator of IOP Technology. This video reports on research that shows why particular IOP styles are favored by specific levels in an organization, from supervisors to CEOs. The fact that CEOs seem to differ from supervisors and managers in their approach has been recognized forever by everyone. But this research was able to tell us exactly what that difference is and to trace its cause back to a single factor. To see what that factor is, we need to look at hard real-world data. Our real-world sample consists of 10,617 individuals from 1,559 different organizations. And those 10,617 people came from the government, nonprofit, and for profit sectors. It is safe to say that the sample's large size, wide range, and diversity make it reasonably representative of the nation as a whole. And here is a picture of the IOP style strength for each title. A glance is enough to suggest that something is going on. The methodical, action-oriented, logical processor and the analytical, hypothetical analyzer styles fall in strength as we ascend the hierarchy. The common denominator of these two styles is structured input. Both styles use some kind of template, plan, or scheme to navigate life. And, while the LP and HA styles fall, the idea-oriented RI and instant action RS styles rise. The common element of these two rising IOP styles is unpatterned input. People employing unpatterned styles navigate life using an opportunistic rather than a disciplined strategy. And the factor that accounts for the divergence between the structured and unpatterned trend lines is predictability. The success of the LP style depends on the LP's action based procedures actually working in practice. Similarly, the methods used by the analytical HA must actually reflect a reality that will come true in the future. Whether these two strategies actually work in practice depends on the job being done, and that job changes by organizational level. The focus of first-level management is operations. Detail is available, facts are on hand, and relationships are clear. Predictability is high and the commitment to the structured input styles of LP and HA make a lot of sense. They work. With managers, the job changes from an operational to a tactical accent. Managers must respond to changing situations, often without full knowledge of the particulars or options. Less knowledge means that predictability declines, and with it, the value of the LP and HA styles. At the VP level, the focus again shifts, this time from tactics to strategy. Strategy involves general plans that attempt to create favorable future situations. To be effective, strategy must extend further into the future than do tactics. Uncertainty increases, and the value of structured styles again declines. At the CEO level, interest moves to mission, the ultimate goals and objectives of an organization. Horizons extend for 5, 10, or even 20 years. Anything resembling predictability goes out the window, and the value of structure drops still further. At this macro level of analysis, horizon governs. The further into the future the decisions reach, the less predictable is the outcome. The less predictable the outcome, the lower the value of structured styles that depend on some form of pattern regularity. But Horizon works in reverse, too, and it works through its effect on resolution. Resolution refers to the clarity of the issues being addressed. It declines as responsibilities broaden. Particulars are lost as multiple interests demand attention and distance from day-to-day -day activities increase. What is vivid at one level is obscure at another. There is no escape. No matter where you are in the hierarchy, those activities that are distant from you will lose detail, and details matter. For example, change the exponent in this famous equation and nothing works. 
If you lose detail, the value of whatever plan, process, or method you are using necessarily declines. As applied to organizational levels, predictability works through the horizon-based agencies of uncertainty and resolution. Together, these explain the decline in HA and LP at higher organizational ranks. But what about the two other IOPS styles? The idea spouting RI and fast acting RS styles rise as the discipline styles of LP and HA fall. And for the same reason, predictability. But this time, predictability is working through the agencies of opportunity and incentive. Interdependent processes tend to dominate the lower end of the hierarchy. At this level, the job requires that everything work right all of the time. Any changes have to be fit into this process stream, in detail. The opportunity for injecting the RI's new ideas or the RS's quick fixes are low. Not only is opportunity low, but so are the incentives for actually implementing the changes that do squeak through. Disruptions from new ideas or quick fixes can be both costly and threatening. Any value promised by the change tends to be offset by the risk. Low opportunity and adverse incentives act to suppress the value and use of the RS and RI styles. But things change at the other end of the hierarchy. Lengthening horizons and loss of resolution create an opportunity for new ideas. There are no predefined processes to interrupt, and the loss of resolution dilutes the detail that might otherwise frustrate change. With fewer factors to consider, new initiatives have an open field. Lengthening horizons also reduce relative risk. In the uncertain world of the future, any initiative, including doing nothing, is risky. The incremental risk from change is thus lessened. With the reduction in relative risk, the promise of gains from new initiatives takes on a higher net value. In addition, the RS's experiments can substitute for analysis in validating a course of action. If it works, keep it. If it doesn't, try something else. This compensates for the loss in certainty that accompanies the drop in the analytical HA commitment. Predictability, working through uncertainty, issue resolution, opportunity, and incentive, explain why strategic styles behave as they do across the hierarchy. We are able to use the single concept of predictability to explain what we see happening in the real world. The criterion of Oakham's razor appears to have been met. This is about as simple as it can get. We can now try a little stress test. There are different first level titles, but all occupy roughly the same hierarchical position. The issue is whether we'll see the same processes operating here as we saw at the macro level. First level management in our sample included 1,801 executives from 390 different organizations. And it included government, nonprofit, and for profit organizations. Statistically, this subset is big and diverse enough to be treated independently. So, what did we find? Well, the trends we saw at the macro level are still visible but are less pronounced. The first question is whether there is any real difference between these first level job titles. And the way to test that is to statistically compare each title against all of the others. And here are the results. The relationships in yellow are significant. They cannot be attributed to chance alone. Something is causing the people holding these titles to approach their jobs in different ways. Let's first focus on the RS and LP styles. Both are action-based strategies. A glance is enough to confirm that something is going on. And we can make these differences clear by applying our statistics to the LP and RS trend lines. Project managers and leaders, circled in blue, use the same levels of RS and LP. The same is true for supervisors, assistant managers, and coordinators in the red circles. Within a circle group, there is no meaningful difference in approach. But between the red and blue groups, there is a significant difference. People are using different strategies. Supervisors, assistant managers, and coordinators in the red group tend to handle process. 
streams of predictable reoccurring transactions. These include things like production, standard processes like accounting, or synchronizing ongoing activities. Project managers and team leaders in the Blue Group focus on goal-oriented activities. That goal is an event rather than a process. Unexpected issues arise as event managers tread untested ground in getting to their goal. Reliance shifts from the structured LP to the more opportunistic RS style. At the macro level, predictability changed with Horizon. Within the first level ranks, it fluctuates by the predictability inherent in the kind of job being done. But in both cases, predictability is the core cause of a change in strategy. First level management seems to be showing the same kind of trend we saw in our macro analysis for the idea-oriented RI style. But this is happening without a change in the hierarchical level. Let's take a look at the job content for an explanation. Supervisors have significantly less commitment to the RI style than do other first level executives. This makes sense. The regularity of their work means they have the least opportunity and incentive to introduce new ideas, hence a low level of RI commitment. Event-oriented leaders work on less predictable matters, and they often work with people from different groups who bring with them different perspectives. This reduces the constraints of established group-based practices. With lower predictability and fewer constraints, the opportunity and incentive for new ideas increases and with it rises the level of RI style commitment. Assistant managers, project managers, and coordinators are next. Each job has varying degrees of predictability, but the differences are small and statistically insignificant. If you are interested, the written research blog treats the distinctions within this group more thoroughly. For now, the statistics are enough to differentiate this middle group from both supervisors and leaders. The point to be made is that predictability once again explains what the real-world data shows. At the first level, the character of the job rather than the decision horizon drives the predictability. But it is predictability nonetheless. First level management's commitment to the analytical HA style is as flat as a pancake. So why is not this style responding to changes in predictability like the others? Well. The thought-based HA style has tools to handle uncertainty, as long as it is reasonably bounded. For example, what if analysis or Monte Carlo techniques easily handle uncertainty within a confined range? In addition, everyone at the first level is dealing with near-term issues, so resolution is not a problem. The net effect is that the HA commitment remains stable because uncertainty is bounded and resolution is high. It only begins to drop at the manager level, where tactical demands limit the time available for analysis, and uncertainty takes on a more unbounded character. This first level analysis has shown that predictability drives style selection here, just as it does for the whole organization. The causes of predictability change from horizon to job content, but predictability remains at the core of the strategic style distribution. Let's summarize what we found. This chart smooths the data by using trend lines to highlight the style relationships. The structured strategies of LP and HA fall with rising rank. And the unpatterned strategies of RS and RI rise. Predictability causes each organizational level to adopt these different strategic style commitments to do their job most effectively. The style trend lines look like this today and, unless you can find a way to rescind the effects of predictability, they will look like this a thousand years from now. This study has uncovered an organizational constant. But there are considerations to keep in mind. The data used in this study were averages. Each of these averages has a distribution around it. People falling below and above the mean were netted out. A smaller sample, or one not as diverse as the one used here, may create a bias that masks the effects of predictability. This is probably one of the reasons that there are so many books citing one or another secret sauce for management success. The resolution and certainty effects on predictability apply to the writers of management books 
as well as the people that they are writing about. There are also local factors that can confound understanding. Local observations can easily be attributed to things like visibility, politics, favoritism, and the like. The effect of these may be true in a particular situation, but they cannot explain the regularity of style relationships across an entire society. And even if confounded by local factors, the universal structural condition of predictability will always be there. It is a fundamental influence that underlies all other factors that may be superimposed upon an organization. The implications of this study are profound. They affect virtually every area of management from career planning to organizational design and everything in between. Time constraints preclude tracing out these effects here. However, a competent professional certified in IOP technology can provide definitive guidance in any area of your interest or concern. Thank you for viewing this video. If you would like to learn more about IOP technology, please visit our websites at IOP.com or OEinstitute.org. Both sites have much more information on IOP and the areas where it has or can be applied. Thank you again for your interest in IOP technology.